This time on the show, gaming on the Nexus 7. I'll be showing you how to get up and running with a PlayStation 3 controller on Android over Bluetooth. Then Darren's getting your local web server online in minutes with a free reverse proxy tool. That means no more port forwarding, no more dynamic DNS, and no more firewall configs. Plus, accidentally breaking into Facebook? We'll explain how one viewer's backups resulted in an inadvertent sidejacking attack. All that and more, this time on Hack 5. This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by The Ben Heck Show. Hello and welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. And I am Shannon Morse. It's your weekly dose of happiness. <laughs> I was like, what's this? What's this? Oh! oh! Yeah, that's two fist bumps at the same time. <laughs> what? I know, because right? Because we are like the leads. Yeah, we do we got a lead episode. I'm super stoked about yes. this. Another snubs so report. Excited. Yes, it's been so long. I'm so excited to actually hack things. Yeah, well, uh, I said take this with you. And I was like, yay, it's dangerous to go alone. So I brought a PlayStation controller too. Da -na -na -na. Exactly. We're being goofy today. We are. You know, I need to uh, actually no give a shout out and a thank you to, uh, I'm not going to say the, the anonymous coward's name, but um, uh, we were approached at DerbyCon by a man who, um, I'll go ahead and tell the story. He bought an alpha from us for $35. Mm -hmm. I say an alpha, but I mean an AWS 036 NHA. Right. Wonderful product names. Anyway, um, and then came back the next day to say, I should have known, I got it cheaper online. Or it was, it was like $5 less on Amazon. And I was just try. I was be very polite and said, you know, well, Sorry it didn't work out for you. At least you know that you're supporting a good show, you mm -hmm. know, and, and yeah. that is what keeps Hack5 going. And that's yeah, it's education true. for the community that we've been supporting the community for seven years now. And uh, and we're not the kind of company that uses like a huge warehouse like Amazon does. Yeah. We, it, and I don't mind that. I don't mind that. Yeah. You know, that's, that's totally like, cool. I, I chill there with the Hack Shop and I, yeah. you know, sometimes I'll sign an autograph and throw it in and... You know, sometimes I'll just do something nice. And yeah. Here's some extra stickers. What got me though is like, okay, so like I, I read YouTube comments, right? But there's right. this like a certain psychological like understanding where like you're just like, okay, you know, you're a troll nugget, it's all good, like whatever, right? <laughs> but I've never been trolled in RL. Yeah. Right. And when he said, when I when I told him like, oh, the warm fuzzies supporting Hack Five, um, he said, what? No one watches Hack Five anymore, and. I, yeah. for the first time ever, took a comment to heart because it was like in RL. And I was just like, this is out of context. You're not YouTube. It's like, how do you respond to this? I don't know what to uh, do you, in RL. Just smile and bite your tongue, right? Yeah. But, uh, and that's what I did. And then I, I actually just, I have to give um, a huge shout out because the guy's got balls. He emailed uh, right after that, um, you know, hours after I got it on the plane and he said that he wanted to send his uh, sincerest apologies that the comments he made were completely out of line. He understands that both of us put a lot of dedication and hard work into the show. His comments were completely inexcusable. And for that, he offers a sincere apology. And it's like, dude, you know, props to you. That took balls. Yeah. So that's, that's you don't have to like the show, right but there. thanks for being mature. About yeah. That. Thanks yeah. for being mature. So I thought it would just no gift for a, from a fan, but that that did make <laughs> me feel a bit better. That does make me feel better too. Yeah. Because yeah. I heard that comment at DerbyCon, and I was just like, "This is my full time job. Like mm -hmm. this is what I do. If nobody watches it, I don't have a job. Well, this we can go is back my to passion. RL. I don't want to go back to RL. I don't want to work at a bank again mm -hmm. or a pizza place. I wanna <laughs> I wanna hack all the things. And but before yes, I do that, before I do that, I want to drink all the booze. Oh, that too. That's what you yeah, had. The order. That was such a yeah. good concert. I know. And people are saying it was like '80s best concert. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I wish there was a better recording. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've got like a recording, but the sound is completely blown out. That's okay. So. Well, they'll just have to buy the CD then. CD's good. CD's yes. good. I've got it in my it's car where good. I don't have an MP3 player. It was number one on Bandcamp for like a week. Yeah. Which is crazy for a nerdcore rapper. We've got to get Eddie awesome. back up in here and do some I hacking agree. all the things. He was doing some <laughs> yes. really cool anti forensic stuff, so no promises, but we'll, we'll ask him and see if he wants to come down and show us some anti forensics, which is like basically trolling forensics investigators with landmines. <laughs> in RL. Yeah. What? Yeah, yeah. I heard about that. So what's going on today? Well, okay, so you're getting into a little bit of gaming hacking. Yes. And I've been uh, getting into a little fun tool that allows you to very quickly set up a reverse proxy to put your stuff on the internet. Now, mm -hmm. I, I promise you right now, this is not an hour-long segment about SSH. 
<laughs> okay. But no, if you would no, like those, the last no season whiteboard. we got plenty of them. <laughs> yeah. Um, this was this is actually like kind of like a consumer tool for you and doing a lot of the same stuff that we did with SSH and proxy chains. Yeah. But if you're looking for just a really simple, inexpensive service or even free service if you want to run it yourself. Um, I have to give props over to uh, Borean from Germany who sent this by. It's called PageKite, and it is very simply a reverse proxy tool that allows you to connect local servers that you would have like normally on your uh, computer onto the internet. Hmm. So that means no need for port forwarding and dynamic DNS and firewall configurations. Um, it's a free and open source project. It does have like a monthly service fee attached to it. Uh, there's a subscription plan starting at like $3 a month oh. for individuals. Uh, but alternatively, if you want, you can actually install it on your own server. And that way, you know, if you've got like a yeah, VPS in the cloud. Yeah, yeah, totally. Nice. Really simple, doesn't require a whole lot. Uh, just Python, Python 2.x. Python, something that I don't know. Learn it. It's easy. Yeah, I could just go to that uh, that code. Code Academy. Yeah, Code Academy. Yeah. I think they have Python on there. Py Python's one of the mm. easiest languages to pick up if you've never done any programming languages before. Oh, so, so I've, I've done really Java and like HTML and crap like that. So do you think I could pick <laughs> I up Python? Know, I don't know if I'd call HTML a programming language, but yeah, you could pick up Python <laughs> really easily. I mean, and there's some really cool stuff that you can do with like built-in libraries to just like, you know, bam, get stuff out there real quick and dirty. Yeah. Uh, the only other dependence really is curl. So if you don't have that sudo app to get install curl, it's not in the latest uh, Ubuntu releases, but pretty simple. Okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started with this on my laptop. And we'll fire up, uh, we'll show you how you can basically take a local web server mm -hmm. and put it on the internet quick and easy. Nice. So uh, I've gone over to pagekite.net and you'll see here they've got like the you know downloads and all that other stuff. But really it's it's super simple. All you have to do in your terminal is sudo and then you want to curl tac s, and then they've got to add an HTTPS site called pagekite.net slash pk for their installer. And then get this, pipe the output of that into sudo bash. So what that's going to do is actually download this file from the internet. Um, it's, it's like a huge script, and it's actually going to um, you know, here, let's, before we pipe it to bash, let's just curl it. If you you'll guys see. are so this way, with pipes, you can always check out my hack tips. <laughs> so if we curl this, oops, you can see what it's going to do is it's going to pipe exec curl tac s this URL right here to bash. So let's try that again. You could also download if you didn't want to. If you don't trust this, you can go ahead and just download the regular Python installer, okay. um, chmod it to make it executable, and then run it. But I do think yes. that this was kind of a cool example to show how you can just uh, pipe a uh, curl into sudo bash, and then it'll run as a script. Let me make that bigger for you guys. You can see it downloads it, and then there we go. It's nice. all ready to go. That was it. So. Kind of a, a cool way to, a novel way to do stuff if it's not in a repository using sudo apt get install. That was really easy. OK. Uh, now, how do you set it up? Well, it's, it's actually really, really simple. They've got a couple of different command line ways to do it. Um, you know, you can uh, you could actually optionally get their Debian package or their RPM package. The <laughs> advantage with those is that you're going to, uh, you know, it's going to tie into your entire, like, Debian update system, so you always get the latest version just through your regular uh, app get updates and all of that. So that's kind of cool. This just being a real simple script right now, this is a nice way to get it set up. And there's two different ways. Like I said, there's the graphical. You can see right here it says that it's installed to slash usr local bin. And so we can actually take this, I'm going to copy this real quick, and we can run it. Um, they also have a GTK GUI. So GTK being like a GUI library, GUI mm -hmm. front end system. Anyway, it's just a way to make pretty um, X Windows yeah. type happiness yeah. mm -hmm. words. Um, <laughs> Pagekite-GTK is a pretty cool way to get it set up. I'm going to put an ampersand at the end there so it'll give me my shell back. And it just launches this little like, hey, let's get ah, you set up for the first okay. time. You hit yes, you give an email address. And finish or next. So then it's going to ask you for your subdomain, like what zone what you are you going to want? Called? Yeah. Yeah. So it's dot uh, pagekite.me. If you're using their paid service, you get the first month for free, and okay. then it's like three dollars a month after that, or or you it's can really go cheap. up as you want more gigs yeah. of transfer, or you could install this on your own VPS. But I'm just going to show off their service because I do think it's pretty cool. Um, I'm going to call it Hack Five Darren, 
next. Yeah, I'm signing up and I'm ready to fly. Finish. And then it saves my stuff to uh, .pagekite.rc. I set this up as a service if I want, and I can see my kites. And so by default, what it does is it, um, if you have a web server running locally mm -hmm. on your machine, uh, it will go ahead and put that out to the cloud. So oh, that's awesome. if I go back over to my browser, for instance, and go to localhost. You can access it from your browser, huh? You can see I actually don't have a, um, a web server running, like if I had Apache yeah. or one of those. Uh, on my other desktop over there, I actually do have a development one. Mm -hmm. This is great for like if I'm working on something as a web developer. And, and I you want to share it yeah. with the other developers? Yeah, this is perfect. That's way like really quick and easy. Just run a command. Uh, suddenly, that becomes on the web, and I don't have to think about the port forwarding. And That's it's nice. like it's 2012. Can we just make things? Yeah, this easy is already? definitely a lot easier than what we learned in the past season, mm -hmm. where we were just like proxy and the SSHing and all that yeah. information. So you could you can actually just use this manager right here, this GUI, to do most everything. Um, of course, I like to use the command line for just quick and dirty stuff uh, mm -hmm. when I'm just trying to fly through things. So once you're signed up uh, with the GTK script. You can pretty much just uh, close this, and I'm going to go ahead and show you an example of how you can set up, like since on this machine I don't have a web server installed, I can actually create uh, one right now. So say like, oh, what do I have on this? I have, um, I don't have much of anything. Downloads. Okay, I'll go to my downloads folder, and I will run, uh, and what I do, 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 do here, instead of the GTK, run.py. And so this is the main page type program, and then you just specify a directory. So in this case, it's home slash Darren, I'm sorry, slash DK slash downloads, right? And then I'm going to give it plus indexes, or I'm sorry, I'm going to give it my, uh, my page name, which is hack 5 darren dot page kite dot net. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to give it plus indexes. And there we go. It's now creating ah. my kite. So that's the command and line version. And it failed. hack 5 darren page kitenet is unavailable. Yeah, you already registered it. <laughs> if you register. So you can. You know what it is? Is they. Because you just created it in the GUI. When you first create it, they send you a registration email, and you're just supposed to click through and verify your email address. Yeah. Um, if you don't do that, they still host the service for like 15 minutes. But they may have some new blocks in case of like people abusing this and using it for spam and stuff. Yeah. Um, let me give that just another try. What if you tried creating it with just a different name, something other than Hack Five Darren? Mm -hmm. uh, it might work. It says disconnected from. Interesting. So yeah, I might have to just go ahead and verify. I did this before on my other one, and it had no problem. So let me just log into my Gmail real quick and activate this. Okay. Okay, so as you can see, I've gone ahead and uh, activated my account. It says account created. So now I should be able to go back, run this again, and it should be able to say, let's see, starting up, front end, disconnected. Hmm. That's a real bummer. Front end connect, disconnected. Damn. Shutting down. Well, it's still running in the background, that's why. I was uh, supposed to hit close, I was supposed to hit disable, mm -hmm. not close. So it's actually still running in the background. Let me just okay. kill it. 2659 uh, and 2694. And I guess 2764, or is that me grepping for it? 2764, whatever. I'm just going to kill them all. They're all dead. All right. They're all dead! Uh, let's fire that up again. The GUI starting up, front end connected. Okay, that Aha. was my problem. Hey, just had to close it. I okay, just cool. some stuff. Hooray! So let me quit instead of close, and it see it's shutting down. All right. So back to my example where I basically just say um, page kite, mm -hmm. the directory that I want to host, my username at pagekite.net and plus indexes. Mm -hmm. And I think it's actually not pagekite.net. That's, the, um, that's their home page. It's actually pagekite.me for your page. 
All right, so it's starting it up. It's connected to the front end. Yay! And then now, if I go Kites to this address. Kites are flying all as well. <laughs> <laughs> I do like that. That's like, so happy, exciting. Happy message. And so you'll see by default, it has an HTTPS site for me. Yeah. So if I go over to HTTPS hack5darren.pagekite.me, there you go. Nice. And this is a directory listing of, if I ls, open a new one here ls right there and you can see these are the uh, the files that are in my download here and as they are in my um in my directory listing on the web yeah and so you could instead of doing uh you know, let me close that instead of doing plus if you don't have the plus indexes operative mm -hmm. then it's just going to expect there to be an index.html right. file in there okay. or uh, otherwise instead of uh saying a directory you could actually say over here you could say uh 80. And there we go. Now, if I have something running on port 80, it's going to go ahead and just redirect it through their service. And, and there you go. And you can do really cool, uh, complicated stuff with this as well. Uh, they, have, they make it really easy to do things like running SSH through their proxy, VNC. Mm -hmm. You can even actually use PageKite over Tor or any other SOX5 pro uh, proxy. So you can get pretty creative with it. There's a bunch of handy tutorials on their wiki at pagekite.net slash wiki. So I figure if you find the service useful, you know, maybe you want to get a subscription plan. Uh, if you're actually a free software developer, you can get a free as in beer account where they're just going <laughs> to hook you up That's because cool. you're awesome and making free software. Otherwise, you can actually run your own pagekite uh, endpoint from your own server. You specify like a dash dash endpoint option and That's then cool. you can connect to it. But yeah. uh, I just think that's really cool, a nifty way to get your stuff online quick and easy. Yeah, just I do it quick and easy. That's great. Yeah, and like it's cool how like Python always makes that stuff easy. Like Python has a built-in web server, and I'm sure this is taking advantage of that. And so I just love a service that makes the internet easy. The I'm, internet's easy, I'm sure yes. there's some concerns <laughs> there. I'm sure there's like tinfoil hat crowd will be like, wait a second. Uh -huh. Then it's going through their endpoint. Yeah. But yeah. you know, that's that's something to think about. Maybe it's that's why you're It's always a concern, but you know. You give some, you lose some. Yeah. Well, this is definitely some convenience, and I'll be checking it out. I want to hear what you guys think. Email us, feedback at hack5.org. Let us know what you think. Uh, and stay tuned, become, because coming up in just a bit, Shannon is going to be getting her gaming on with a little OTG and PS3 and Android and USB and Bluetooth. Throw in a couple more acronyms. We'll be right back. Join modding wizard Ben Heck and friends as they build and modify a host of amazing community-inspired creations. Be sure to watch new episodes of The Ben Heck Show every two weeks right here at revision3.com slash tbhs. In the latest episode of The Ben Heck Show, Ben builds the automatic sunglasses he's been dreaming about for years. Check out element14.com slash tbhs for a chance to win the latest builds from Ben's show.